Okay, for this video, we are going to start, instead of just talking about the normal distribution, talking about the normal distribution with respect to how it interacts with our central limit theorem. So before we do that, let's go ahead and do a quick recap of our normal distribution. So remember, with our normal distribution, we have our nice little bell curve with the center of this guy at the mean, and this guy is our standard deviation. And the equation that we've been using for this guy is z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. And we do this in order to be able to talk about like how far away is a specific observation uh, from our mean in terms of our standard deviations. And then using our uh, our software, we have been able to find out, like, you know, the probability that, you know, a randomly selected variable would be this point or smaller, or sometimes we have, instead, we use like a quantile thing where we are given the area under the curve and we need to figure out where the critical point is, and we can use basically all of our probability uh, equations uh, with this scenario as well when we're just using the normal distribution. Uh, but sometimes uh, we're not interested in just a single observation. Instead, oftentimes we are interested in looking about how x bar is distributed or how the sample mean is distributed. So what happens when we're dealing with a central limit theorem and we are dealing with a sampling distribution. Let me write that out. This is the sampling We are interested in, if we were to take the samples of size 10 over and over and over again, or 20 or 30, what happens to our distribution? Well, what happens is that our distribution actually tightens down. It's still normal, but it's tighter than, than normal and we have actually a new equation. So when we're dealing with our central limit theorem, we have this guy. It's still a z equation, but instead of talking about x, we're talking about x bar. That's really handy. We still subtract from the mean, and we divide by the sampling standard deviation. So we write it like this with sigma with respect to x bar. So we got to know how to calculate out that sigma value. And we would take sigma x bar is just equal to the original standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And that will give us our new equation for this guy for our central limit theorem. And so it's, it's very handy that we can now talk about, instead of just single measurements, now we can talk about the distribution of multiple measurements over and over and over again. And we know that the central limit theorem basically says, uh, or one part of it says, you know, that if our original distribution is normally distributed, the sampling distribution is also going to be normally distributed. What changes, though, is this equation. So instead of using x, we're using this point estimator of x bar. And this guy, we have a new sigma for our sampling distribution. We now are using sigma x bar. And we just modify it by dividing it by the square root of the sample size. So if our sample size increases, this distribution is going to tighten down even further. If, the, if we don't have too many observations, it's actually going to be decently wide uh, as well. The nice thing, too, is that this new sampling distribution is still going to be centered about the mean. And this helps us be able to talk about this sampling distribution instead of just the distribution of the individual measurements.